Hey y'all, Dixie here. Today I want to talk about my favorite puffy coat for 2021. After testing a couple of new puffy coats on the Pinhoti Trail and comparing them to my go-to, I've dialed in on a favorite. Coming in at third place is the Arcteryx Women's Cerium LT Hoodie. This was my least favorite of the down puffy coats I've had. I think it's a quality jacket and would probably work well for some people, but I'm gonna go over the pros and cons. First of all, it's a fairly lightweight jacket. It's just under 10 ounces, so there are more lightweight options, but it's still considered a very lightweight coat. Also, it's a warm jacket. I'd hazard a guess that this is probably warmer than my Ghost Whisper jacket, and it's insulated with 850 fill power down. It's got an adjustable hood, although I'm not a huge fan of how you adjust it. It's actually behind the head, so you've got to kind of like reach back with both of your hands and try to adjust it. If there's something down here, it just seems a bit more accessible while you're hiking and probably have trekking poles in your hand. One of my favorite things about this Arcteryx jacket is it's got a pocket on the inside. I mean, I just can't get enough of pockets, so to have one that you can kind of stash something away on the inside, like your phone or I don't know, whatever, something that you want a bit more secure than where you're putting your hands in the outer pockets. This jacket also seems to repel water pretty well. Now, I'm not saying that it could double as a raincoat, but when I was on the Pinhoti Trail, I had this puffy coat on one day because the weather showed it wasn't supposed to rain at all. And then it started raining and sleeting and actually snowing at some points. And I was on my last day of that stretch, so I knew I was about to go to town. So I just left it on and used an umbrella to help shield me from the weather. And then I think I finally put on my rain jacket. But anyway, it definitely got some drops on it, some snowflakes and things like that. And I was able to just kind of brush it off and I never got soaked. So while I wouldn't put yourself in that situation of getting your puffy coat wet in cold weather, if you find yourself for some reason in that situation, like the bottom drops out and you start getting rained on, I think it's something that you can shake off pretty easily while you're trying to get it put up. And finally, there are a lot of color options. Although if you go with one of the lighter colors, be warned that I've seen some reviews that say you can see some of the darker down feathers inside the coat. That might not matter to some of y'all, but just a heads up in case it does. This jacket cost me $379. And at the time I purchased each of the puffy coats, this one was actually the cheapest. Now let's talk about the cons. First of all, this jacket seems to be less packable than the other puffy coats that I have. It just doesn't compress down as much. It's not like it takes up a ton of space. And again, I think it's still a fine puffy coat, but in comparing it to the other options, it was the least packable. What was a complete deal breaker for me is it was just a bit too short. I mean, it fit fine, but the other puffies I had were longer. They seemed to fit my body style better. I'm a tall person. I've got a long torso. Um, also, I've got long arms. So whenever I would stretch my arms out, my wrists would show. It's not the end of the world. I will still keep this coat and use it, but there are other options that work better if you tend to have a longer torso and longer arms. So if you've got a shorter torso, you may love this coat. And just to give reference for any of y'all who are wondering, I am 5'8". In second place is my old go-to, the Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisper Down Jacket. One of the things I really love about this down coat is that it's only eight ounces, so very lightweight, and it's insulated with 800 fill power down, but this jacket, that I own, I saw now is available online for $200 or so, depending on where you get it. When I got it, it was probably closer to $400, but I think that that's because they now have an option for 1000 fill power down. So it might be interesting to try that one out and see how it compares to the first place coat I'm going to talk about, but now I'm getting ahead of myself. That 1000 fill power coat is available for $375. The Ghost Whisper jacket fits me well. I feel like it could still be a little bit longer, but I never had any complaints about it not covering my torso completely. I've used this puffy coat. I actually had two different ones because I had just really mutilated one of them. I had a bunch of uh, burn holes in it from 
sitting too close to a campfire and I always pick the unlucky spot. So I had patched it up with some gear tape over the years and I ended up getting another one. But over a span of 6,000 plus miles or so, I've had two of these down jackets. So it's tried and true and I believe in them. And finally, the Ghost Whisper packs down into a really small ball. So it's not gonna take up a lot of space in your pack. The only thing that I would really consider negative about this jacket, other than it could be a little bit longer, is that the hood is not adjustable. So there have been times where I'm hiking, I've got the hood on and it's just, I don't know, either it's really windy and it's hard to keep the hood on or um, I just wanna trap more warmth around my head and it's just not something that you can cinch down. And finally, in first place for my new favorite puffy coat is the Mont Bell Plasma 1000 Alpine Down Parka. I don't know how I just got that, but I'm really excited that I was able to remember the full name. As soon as I put this coat on, I was like, whoa. I knew that it was the puffiest of all puffies I had ever had and it was just instantly obvious how warm it was. It's insulated with 1000 fill power down and has a two-way adjustable hood. So not only can you cinch it down around your face, but also like how much space is left between your head and the puffy. I got the men's version, which is 8.4 ounces, but the women's version is actually only 7.9 ounces. So it's a little bit lighter than my Ghost Whisperer. The biggest negative of the Mont Bell Plasma 1000, in my opinion, is it's expensive. And even for a puffy coat, it's expensive. It cost me $440. And I guess another con for somebody who's not as cold natured as I am, is it could be too warm. If you find yourself backpacking in colder temperatures and when you get out of the tent in the morning, you wanna start with a puffy coat on until you kinda of get warmed up, this coat is gonna warm you up pretty quickly to where you're gonna to have to be putting your pack down, taking it off and packing it up. And then you know later you stop and take a break and you get cold and you put your puffy on. So then when you start off from your break again, it's not long before you have to put it down. So in that instance, the Ghost Whisper jacket might be a better option for you. Something that's lightweight and it will keep you warm. Maybe you just wanna use it at night in camp or while you sleep. Or if you're the type of person who likes to sleep with a puffy coat on at night, but you're not super cold natured, then having the Plasma 1000 might be a little bit over the edge for you and you might not be able to find that middle of the road in the way of warmth that you would find in the Ghost Whisperer. It really just boils down to personal preference. And I'm a very cold natured person all the time. So having not even a half an ounce of weight added for an additional cost of $65 is well worth it for me. But if you're not a cold natured person, this jacket could be overkill for you. Before I go, just as a side note, I wanna say that I know down puffy coats especially can be very expensive and a lot of them typically run somewhere between the $200 to the $500 range, but you don't have to have a down puffy coat to go backpacking. So don't feel like you have to spend all of this money on this one piece of equipment or else you can never be in the world of backpacking. It's not like that. You can use things like a fleece like I have on right now. You can also try thrift stores. You can even purchase a puffy coat that's made with synthetic material so it's a bit cheaper. The puffy coat I wore on the entire Appalachian Trail was synthetic and it was also on sale. You can also check out the flea market type groups on Facebook. There are specific used backpacking gear groups on there where you can find things like puffy coats and other equipment for like half the price. And then REI often has yard sales. I believe they happen once a month or so. So if you live near an REI and you're an REI member, then you can go in and maybe it's something somebody wore for a little while and they weren't crazy about it, so they returned it. REI will put that stuff in their yard sale and it's usually at a very discounted rate. Well, anyway, that is all I have for y'all today on puffy coats. If you found a puffy coat, whether it's on this list or not, that's your go-to puffy. I'd love to hear about that in the comments below and why you've decided that's the one that works best for you. Thank you so much for watching and we will see y'all next time.